uh, very pleased to have our uh, three of our partners that are funded through the um, Henry Luce Foundation. The Luce Foundation has been providing us with funds for the last um, three years to have international exchanges, both with our students getting to do internships overseas, as well as having international students come and do either one or two years uh, in our master's program in environmental policy. And so we have relationships with the institutions um, overseas that, that are helping to, to identify students for us and send us students. So today we have three of our international partners who are going to give us very brief uh, presentations on some notes from their graduate programs, education programs, or uh, ways in which they are um, interacting with young people who are uh, becoming professionals in the world of environmental policy. Um, two of our guests are from universities and one is from a, an NGO, so, so it's not uh, all exactly the same context, but all of them are involved in policy formulation. So the, um, I'll introduce the three guests first and then we'll let them um, give their short presentations and then we'll save some time after all three of them have gone for question and answer. Um, we have a couple of panels this morning and then we will have a, a mid-morning um, coffee break and um, so we're hoping that all of you will stay and then uh, sessions go through this afternoon until our keynote at the end of the day. For those of you who didn't have this information yesterday, our, um, one of our keynote speakers for this afternoon, David Orr, ha was, had to cancel at the last minute. So I'm, we're sorry that he won't be able to be here with us. But um, uh, Bill Schlesinger, who is the president of the Cary Institute for Ecosystem Studies and uh, a well-known carbon geochemist, is um, going to be with us. And he and Eben will... Um, I'm sure have an interesting discussion at the end of the day. So please do stay with us. So I'd like to introduce our panel. Um, they will, uh, I, I'll introduce them in the order in which they will speak. Um, Zarina Patel will begin. She is um, uh, in the geography, field of geography um, at uh, Witzwatersrand University in, in Johannesburg, South Africa. And um, her, her field of study has moved toward environmental geography, environmental, um, social, and political um, uh, interests. And she's going to tell us a little bit about their program and the, the kinds of uh, education and degrees that they produce in there. Then we will have uh, Juan Jose Consejo, who is the director of the Institute for Nature and Society in Oaxaca, Mexico. And uh, we, Bard has had a long, BSEP has had a long relationship with uh, INSO, his organization that is, um, works primarily on uh, water issues in the Oaxaca region in Mexico. And um, we've had a number of our Graduate students have done their research there. We have some of our alumni here in the audience that have done their research with Juan Jose in Mexico. And one of our students is there currently. And um, so he's gonna tell us a little bit about how that experience, about how interdisciplinary and uh, studies fu help fulfill some of their, the goals, the mission of their um, organization. And last but not least, we have uh, Dr. Yi Jun Ji, who is coming from Nankai University in Beijing. And uh, we have also had many um, very fruitful exchanges with Nankai. We've had, I think, three students from Nankai come to do our program, uh, a number of which have stayed on to do the full two-year master's degree and produced excellent work, um, the most recent one of which now works for the Nature Conservancy in China working on uh, uh, emissions control from coal-fired power plants. So she's doing fantastic work. And um, so he's going to tell us a little bit about their program on urban ecology or industrial ecology at Nankai. 
So we welcome all of our loose guests who've traveled far and are, have made this long, long trip just for a short weekend. None of them were actually able to stay and be tourists here at all, which we're at, uh, is unfortunate. But um, we thank, we really appreciate the fact that they've made this long trip. So Zarina, would you like to start? So let's give them a welcome. Okay, good morning everyone. Um, I'd like to start by just thanking our colleagues at uh, BCEF and BARD for inviting me to come and share some of our experiences with interdisciplinary teaching at the University of Advertisement. So um, thank you very much for having us. It's a great opportunity. Thanks. Can everyone hear me at the back there? Yeah. Okay, so at, at BITS, we don't really have a, a formal program around which, which has a, as, a, as its objective interdisciplinary teaching. Um, so what I want to share with you this morning, I want to use this opportunity really to talk about some of the context within which we, um, which, which really underscores the need for interdisciplinary teaching and for having a program that uh, deals with environmental issues in a more interdisciplinary way uh, in terms of our context. Um, so firstly, just to say that um, in the last 15 years since the dismantling of apartheid, we've had quite major policy reform in South Africa, as one can expect. And this has also found its, its place in the environmental policy arena. Um, during apartheid, there was no mention of the environment in the Constitution, and one of the big ch shifts in policy changes in South Africa is that now in the Constitution, we have a separate section that deals specifically with environmental rights. So that's quite a big shift um, in terms of policy change in the last 15 years. Um, the key legislation in terms of environmental policy in South Africa has also shifted from the Environmental Conservation Act to the, environment, uh, the National Environmental Management Act. And with that comes a change in ethos in terms of how we deal with the environment from one that is much more conservation focused, from looking at uh, prioritizing issues of fauna and flora, towards embracing broader questions of justice and equity uh, by looking at questions of civil rights, equity, empowerment, and, accountab and accountability. Now, uh, given the discussion yesterday, one can immediately see a, a bit of a tension here. Our legislation is uh, focused on management, whereas the kinds of things that we're trying to achieve uh, are sitting in quite a different realm that can't really be managed. Um, so in summary then, environmental policy reform in South Africa since 1994 has been uh, quite dramatic. We've moved, we've embraced principles like sustainable development, dem democratic decision making, social and environmental justice. South Africa also hosted the World Summit on Sustainable Development in 2002 and have also been very significant global players in global environmental decision making um, over the last 15 years. So we're projecting an image then of a country that's making quite significant strides in environmental policy both nationally and internationally. However, the reality on the ground is that there's a, quite a huge gap between policy and practice in South Africa where the poor continue to be marginalized in decision making processes and increasingly, the national environment itself is also being marginalized in decision-making processes. So given this policy background, we do have a number of opportunities for thinking about inter interdisciplinary teaching and approaches um, towards the environment. There was a very strong conservation ethic during uh, the colonial and apartheid eras, which resulted in enclaves of environmental sustainability. So we really do have some amazingly beautiful areas of wilderness in South Africa. 